In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Google form, determine where the response data will be sent, and determine which data you're going to collect with the form. So whenever you make a form, as a teacher, you probably want that form uh, to be located in a specific spot. For example, if you're giving a quiz on fourth grade science, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a folder in Google Drive for fourth grade and fourth grade science within it. Uh, usually I would recommend wherever you want that form to be, navigate there in Drive first, then click on New and select Google Forms. When you do that, it will create that form in the folder you are in. So let's create a new form and let's say we want it to be fourth grade science quiz. All right, so I type here and then notice what happens if I click up here, it automatically changes it to the title that I gave it. You can add a description. Uh, this form is automatically collecting emails for MSD at Boone Township School users. That is set to default for me. Uh, if you want to change that setting, maybe you don't want to collect email addresses uh, whenever you create a form. You can click on change settings and then this will show you all of the data that you can collect and how best to do it. If you want to make this a quiz, you can make it a quiz and then you get a bunch of other options. Uh, you can release grades after each submission. You're going to have to add an answer key for that. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, you can put it in locked mode similar to what we saw in Google Classroom and there's a bunch of other options for you. What do you do with the responses? Do you collect the email address? Do you send the users a copy of their responses? So there's a bunch of uh, different settings that you can use when you create a form. All right. The collect email address, that I have on by default. If you go to default and you don't want to do that, you can click that off. Do you want to make questions required by default? So there are a bunch of different settings that you can use in order to make this form behave the way that you would like. Now whenever you collect information from a form, you're going to get that information and you're probably going to want to look at it, uh, visualize it, and maybe even run some analysis on it. So if you click on responses, there are no responses yet. You can turn on whether or not you will accept responses. This is a good idea. Uh, if the form has a due date and you don't want people adding to the form responses after that, you can click it off once that date has passed. Uh, but really what we're interested in here is where is that data that we're collecting with this form going to be stored? I always click on the Google Sheets option. It will create a spreadsheet and save all of that data for me. Otherwise, you can click on the little snowman menu. You can get notified. Uh, by email when you get new re responses, that can be a real pain. You can download them, but you can do that whether you save it as a sheet or not. The alternative is if you don't uh, create the spreadsheet, users will take the, f the, they'll fill in the form and you'll get their data, but it will be more visual. If you're going to do any analysis of it, like sort it, find an average, things like that, you're probably going to want it into a Google Sheet. And if you put the responses in a Google Sheet, you're going to be able to visualize all that data in forms anyway. So it's not one or the other. I just always put it in Sheets to be safe. All right, so that is how you can create a new form, uh, create the settings for it, and adjust them to whatever you like, and determine where those responses will be saved.